There are two complex myths woven into the fabric of America that is both our motivation and our own undoing. The issue is mostly in confusion between concepts that often overlap each other and often end up meaning the same thing in many people's minds. Or they will take a definition, divide it in half, and tie one half to a positive definition and another to a negative definition, creating a completely new language. The first group of definitions I've found in my discussions on YouTube that many confuse are invention, science, and engineering. The fact that they overlap and are integral and require each other to exist is why they're often confused and lumped together, and from them there are some very dangerous misunderstandings. Science is a method to determine what is true by very strict meticulous rules of observation and repeatability to prevent jumping to the wrong conclusion or collecting faulty data leading to misinformation and misunderstanding. The complex level of science requires a certain level of training on the subject before one can be taken seriously on the topic as some very basic concepts could be completely unknown to that person, absolutely skewing their conclusions. Engineering is a method to take what science has discovered and make it useful to our everyday lives. It looks at all the materials known to science at the time, as well as all the forces known to science, and improves on technology, developing the safest, cheapest, and best way we know at the moment to move us technologically forward. It requires a complex understanding of cross-scientific field interactions, math, materials, and level of certainty, and ability to assure quality. If an engineer gets something like a bridge wrong and people die, that engineer can be charged with manslaughter. Invention is a creative force whereby a person is able to envision a combination of current technologies and use them in ways never thought of before to expand technology more so. Unlike science and engineering though, invention can be done by nearly anyone with a creative and open mind. America was built on invention, for many of our founding fathers and famous people were great inventors, and many scientists and engineers made discoveries no one else would have prior except by using invention to use technologies currently in use and combining them together in a way that allowed them to either gain new data on a part of reality or to create a new tool to better engineer for machining or safety. The danger is that as invention is so intertwined in our national psyche with scientists and engineers, that all three of the definitions end up getting blurred together and they often get confused and mixed up as to their meaning. We encourage our children to be creative and to think for themselves. We tell them anyone can be creative and regale them with stories of creative people, some scientists, some not. Many of them everyday people who just looked at a problem differently from the average everyday way of thinking and created a new invention. Some became great wealthy entrepreneurs that we're taught to look up to and admire so much. Of course, the story doesn't include the part of the process to make this invention useful to the world involved an engineer working hard to make it more efficient than just stick the individual pieces of technology together. It involves figuring out the best piece of technology, material, or force interaction for this new task and eliminating extra traits that would have been useful to the individual tech but now just acts as redundant energy and cost-consuming baggage that could go either to the customer's pockets, reduce size, or increase safety. The original prototype was unwieldy and bulky as a great proof of concept, but after that an engineer comes in and makes it actually useful, sleek, affordable, and efficient for the rest of us. Of course, if you explain the complex details and education that an engineer needs to make, most people are more than happy to allow the engineers to do that work. However, engineering is in the background of the mind of the average American, while science and invention are at the forefront and unfortunately have some memetic crossover in definitions. So many people believe they can use the same inventive principle of taking multiple technologies and combining them together and use it on science. They think they can take multiple facts in science and cobble them together to create new facts or theories. Of course, the very definition of scientific theory is one that has been repeatedly scientifically tested and challenged at every potential question and is now the standard to explain a proven set of facts, while a hypothesis is much more like their cobbled together collection of facts. 
Much like how an engineer takes a collection of technology and tests and recombines it, discarding any part that it can that won't lose its function to make it into an end product, a scientist takes a collection of facts and using repeated experimentations and tests, they recombine the idea, discarding any part that the evidence found doesn't support to find out the final truth. It's much like how if an engineer ignores any key part, they will go to prison or lose their credibility. A scientist has the same checks and pressures of peer review to prevent them from providing false data or producing the wrong conclusions based on their own biases or wish to believe. Failure to do so can lead to a loss of credibility and a ruined career. The average person has no problem leaving engineering up to the engineers, but because of American rugged individualism and creativity and the understanding that anyone can be an inventor, that mimetic crossover makes them think they can create theories on their own, quite often out of thin air. Anyone who disagrees with them is of course closed-minded or elitist. If you question them, you will find that there is a lot of basic stuff they don't know about the field they're claiming but it makes logical sense to them, so it must be true. However, without a good understanding of the complexity of this subject, some major variation in the facts can completely destroy your logically sounding idea. That is why science was invented and perfected. There are many amazing, completely logical sounding ideas out there, so we have to test them against reality to find out which one is the true answer as opposed to the many false but equally logically sounding ideas. Pseudoscience is nothing more than that crossover of invention and science in all the wrong ways. Many scientists even don't understand this and will buy into or create logically sounding hypotheses that are not in their field of knowledge and education and the fact that they are a scientist sadly lends credibility to the average uneducated person and they'll swallow it too. That scientist in that field has just little more ability to make claims about another field as a person on the street, but because of that crossover confusion, many will continue to perpetuate pseudoscience. Of course, this brings us to our other collection of American definitional myths, and that is intelligence, education, and experience. Intelligence is the potential one has to learn, retain, and understand a topic, and to unlearn it if need be. Scientific education is a standardized system of teaching information to attempt to ensure that a person has the information and knowledge level and skill ability to make experiments and analyze data so they can make hypotheses, test them, and run them through the rest of the scientific community via peer review to hopefully be able to confirm it as a theory. Experience is a level of repeated activities over time that one gets to experiment with and gain a deep understanding with that activity or field of study. However, America, and often much of the West, is fixed on intelligence and confuses it with education and experience. If you try and ask a person making a claim what their education is, they often get angry because they perceive it as you saying they're uneducated and therefore unintelligent. Education and intelligence are two completely different things. However, since people with only a certain level of measurable intelligence can move forward to further specialized education, they make the leap that you're calling them stupid if you tell them they are uneducated about that subject. These days when I'm trying to make an argument, I make sure to tell people you show that you're intelligent enough to do the research on this subject, but you're demonstrating that you're too lazy to do so. This hopefully reduces this leap of insult. Even very well educated people can do this because it's so ingrained into us. One of the big issues Thunderfoot has is he breaks one of Sagan's prime rules of skepticism and when his idea is attacked, he emotionally takes it as a personal attack. He has not learned to separate the two and get his emotions out of the mix. It's very hard to learn to overcome, but if you want to be right, you cannot take an attack on your idea personally or you'll shut down your reasoning skills with emotion and latch on to your possibly flawed idea even stronger because it's now a part of your identity. In America, intelligence is thought of as an innate essence and we're praised for it if we get the right answer being told we're smart. In Asia, intelligence is an uncontrollable factor. It's something you may have, but you didn't do anything to earn it. So they focus their praise on hard work. Hard work can also make you smarter, and they are praised for how much they struggled. They see much better results. They do not confuse education with intelligence. 
Education is a product of hard work with a mix of luck of inherent intelligence. In the U.S., quite often, if there are not other driving factors, many who are told they're smart just stop putting effort into it. And when they reach something that is difficult for them, they feel stupid and they will often have their ego damaged and give up. In Asia, teachers will purposely give their students assignments just beyond their level of understanding. And since the students are trained that hard work is why they succeed, they can work hard to overcome that barrier, while our students in an experiment mimicking this practice give up nearly immediately saying, well, we just haven't covered this yet. Of course, let us not for a second fall into the delusion that Asian schools are perfect. There is a high level of stress in many of them for success in terms of suicide, and many teachers realize that quite often these schools are set up to make these kids use their hard work to memorize facts and never deviate from these facts or question or be creative. It's why America still has the highest backlog of patents in the world just waiting to be processed. Each one of us is trained to be an invention producing machine, though many of us have not been trained to work hard to bring these inventions to fruition, and why they are programmed to be a well-oiled knowledge machine. Just imagine what our world would be like if both cultures learned from each other, taking the inventions of learning of both cultures and engineering them into a hardworking and highly creative society to know their limits of their competence on a subject and don't take an attack on their idea as personal. As Edison said, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. We would be a planet of geniuses who understand what definitions mean instead of mushing them together and thinking we can do exactly what a scientist in a particular field can do since anyone can be an inventor. And since we are smart, we are just as qualified in a field as someone actually trained in it. Pseudoscience would be extinct in a generation.